We're here at Inwangsan, which means the Benevolent King Mountain. A very powerful name for Buddhism, for example, it means the king who supports Buddhism and fosters the religion. Therefore, the king himself is worshipped as a kind of a Buddha for supporting Buddhism itself. Under Confucianism, it's a very key phrase. It's what Confucius said, a king must be benevolent. If he's not benevolent, he's not really a king, meaning helping his people, uh, benefiting humanity and society. This man above me here, yep, this oh, yeah. is him. 5001 Bill, the same guy. Yulguk E.E. -E. Yulguk, his pen name. E, his family name, and E is also his personal name. It's a different Chinese character, but they're both pronounced E. All right, Li, in other words, uh, by the, the modern pronunciation. Li Yilguk. Over there is his mother. She's the one on the 50,000 won bill in there. A lot of her artwork, two pieces of her paintings are on the 50,000 won bill. Also on the back side of 5,000 won. This is her paintings. She was an accomplished artist. One, considered one of the best, one of the top five or six painters of the Joseon dynasty. The Guksadar. The National Master Shrine. This is the primary shaman spiritual shrine of all of Korea. The paintings inside there on the wall are two to three hundred years old. They are the oldest shaman paintings we have in the nation. Okay? This whole building, this shrine, and especially the paintings inside, should be regarded as a national treasure, a national property of some sorts, and be sort of public. But instead, some shaman, some certain shamans who control this shrine uh, treat it as their private property mm. and use it that way. There's a huge amount of money involved. This shrine takes in hundreds of thousands of dollars per year in donation money. To hold your ceremony in here would cost you thousands of dollars. Just for half a day ceremony and the people do, do a full scale all, all day, all night, 24 hour ceremony, $10,000, $20,000. Well, that sort of thing. So there's big money at stake. The young man with the short hair, the big guy who just walked in and then came here and closed the doors, he's kind of a gangster uh, controlling this. He doesn't like me at all because I keep bringing people up here who look in there and he's hated me for 20 years. <laughs> we're 15 anyway, he's not that old. Because the shamans, themselves, they were kind to us, they were not... Yeah, the shamans, well, it's like shamans this, have all kinds one. of different attitudes. Yeah. These shamans, the main shamans here who actually operate here generally are pretty friendly to uh, people yeah. looking, watching, even mm -hmm. taking yeah. photos, yeah. what they do. The, that young man, and he is a partner, there's another thug guy here. They act like it's really private property. Oh. They shut the doors, they say, go away, go away. Now, on the one hand, maintaining sacred spiritual atmosphere, not having tourists and mm -hmm. photographers. That's kind of understandable. Mm -hmm. And there are many holy places around the world that don't let you bring your camera in or whatever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, these people don't really own this at all. And as I say, I think it, it should have the status of like a national museum property. Yeah. Yeah. On the top of the mountain, full in the center of shamanistic shrines and spirits and mountain spirits, in the center of energy, here, near to Seoul. <laughs> So this was our tour with Hippie Korea and Professor David Mason. We went here to the Imjingak Shrine. And what else did we see today? We've been seeing Inwangsan, the Benevolent King Mountain and its shamanic shrines, the Sunbawi Rocks, the Guksadang Shrine, and now the Viewing Rocks where we see over the Seoul City Wall and most of Seoul City within our view. Fantastic! This tour really brought us here onto the top of Seoul City and the mountains in the springtime with all the flowers blooming, with all our fantastic global hippies. And wait for the next 
lecture with Professor David Mason, which will be on Korean Buddhism. Give us some small insight about that. We'll be talking about the native characteristics of Korean Buddhism. What makes it really Korean? How is it different from Buddhism of other nations? The very interesting national characteristics of it. Fantastic. So stay tuned, check us out and come to the Suwon Yongtong Library on May 30th for David Mason's Buddhism Lecture. Thank you. Bye.